Hey, wonderful people, we're back here again talking about the narcissist, and this is an important one too, how to spot a narcissist. How to spot them, because you might repel them, or maybe you're not great at that. Maybe you didn't see that video. I'll put it up at the end of this video. <laughs> but how to spot a narcissist early on, right? If you're dating... Or, honestly, if you're going into another job, you want to know that the supervisor that you're going to be working with is not a narcissist. Usually, the supervisor that you um, that's interviewing you is going to be working with you, and they do that, so make sure that both of you can work together. And, yeah, so how to spot a narcissist straight out is to criticize them. That is a, a good technique, a, a little helpful criticism. They Narcissists cannot take criticism. It is a wound deep in them that has created a lot of this narcissism in the first place, and they can't take it, not even a little. So if they cannot, if a person cannot take helpful criticism and not cannot laugh at themselves critically, the big red flag there, person, big red flag. Now, that might not say narcissist, maybe, but it's a red flag. It's it's one of the things that they definitely have. So when you, what this looks like is that when you criticize them just a little bit, sometimes they can explode on you, have a very negative reaction, way over what, way over reaction to what it should be for that uh, little criticism. You know, sometimes when we get into relationships, romantic relationships or friendships, we tend to, you know, negatively joke about each other, criticize each other, you know, and that's, that's, that's part of a friendship. That's part of our socializing skills. We know that they're not really harassing us or attacking us, but the narcissist doesn't know that and doesn't feel that. And that's a good way to bring them out, uh, trigger them into narcissism, and they will be done with you after that. <laughs> they will be so done with you. And you should be done with them as well. Be okay with it. The, I know you didn't get the job, and the, the boss looked. Because what an interview will do, and a date is an interview basically, right? An interview to be a partner in your life. <laughs> if you criticized anything of theirs, uh, now, a boss will be like, well, yeah, we do it this way because we do this and we do that and we do this and we do that. That's why it looks like that. But if they do, oh, wow, yeah, ugh, you know, and they get all this defensive stuff about them, it's over. It is over. Which brings me to another red flag of a narcissist and how they argue. A regular person, normal people come together and argue about things. They come trying, they're trying to find a middle ground that they both can come to, to an agreement that satisfies both parties. Um, well enough, right? Or at least express their view on something. I expressed my view, you expressed your view. Maybe we didn't get anything done, but we did express our views. And that's what a, a normal functioning friendship relationship, romantic relationship, working relationship can really work on. A narcissist doesn't believe that. It is a battlefield. You are, an argument is there to ruin you, to win, to get that superiority gap, and to absolutely devastate you. That's what the argument is about. That's why they'll yell. That's why they'll throw a tantrum. That's why they'll threaten. That's why they'll bring up embarrassments embarrassing stuff that's why they bring up unrelated stuff that's why they bring up emotional stuff and that's why they name call and you can call them out on that you can say that's not normal it's not normal to uh, call people names it's not normal to yell at people at the top of your lungs that's not normal that's not what normal people do that's not how normal people react the only time normal people react crazy like that is when the life of someone they love or themselves is on the line. That's the only time that they, and that's because of all the emotions and what's at stake. And honestly, when my the life of my mom was on the line, it was very stressful, but I didn't even do that. So, 
It's not normal to yell, scream, name call, threaten, and all this other craziness. One of the best ways to spot a narcissist is to get behind the facade, okay? They have what's called a mask, and it's this happy mask, this happy face. I'm okay, I'm perfect on the outside. But on the other side is where all the ugly stuff is. Now, how do you figure that out? Well, you talk to the people that are on the other side, right? If it's a job, you talk to some employees that work there. They will dish out all the ugly stuff. You take some of it with a grain of salt, but if you get a lot of compliment, uh, a lot of complaints, <laughs> rather, a lot of complaints, you probably don't want to work there. If you get 50-50, you might, eh, I don't know. And if you get a lot of compliments, then it's probably, you really need to be working there, right? And it's kind of the same way in a romantic relationship. If you are interested in somebody and you, honestly, a narcissist is only going to let you visit their family and those people behind the scenes when you're chaperoned. They're not gonna let you, they're not gonna want you to show up unannounced at somebody behind the scene because they can control you and control the narrative at that point. Yeah, then you'll be seeing behind the scenes and you'll be gone. And that's honestly what you want to do. You want, Facebook ain't going to cut it. You want to see somebody, uh, somebody behind the scenes somehow. Or show up early for a date and talk to their mom. You know, if, they, if it's at their house and you want to talk to, you, or if it's an adult relationship and they live in an apartment complex, you might want to talk to some of the neighbors, right? So how, how, uh, uh, that's a cat on a scratching post. You might want to talk to some of the neighbors. Now it's not fair to talk to their exes. Exes are always going to, well, you know, you could talk to their exes, but you know how it's going to go. <laughs> they didn't like them. So, but you can decipher by what the ex has said, by what's really going on. Now, if the ex says um, things like, she was crazy, she was nuts, or he was nuts, he was aggressive, he was, he was always trying to limit me and tell me I couldn't be with my friends. He was always so possessive, he was crazy. You know, the, the C word, crazy, comes up a lot. <laughs> um, possessiveness comes up a lot being bad at arguing or empathizing will come up a lot. That's, those are not good red flags. I mean, uh, they are red flags <laughs> and not good things to have. And another good way to find out if this is a narcissist is to actually have an argument with them, to have an argument with them. Because until you have a no holds barred argument, you don't really know what's in there. Right. For me, a no holds barred argument is going to be, yeah, we're trying to come to an agreement on this. And I will pull out of the other person what they really want if they're not going to say it. So some people won't really say it, what they want. I will pull that out. I'll try and pull that out if to get here. If they're not, if I'm going to be here and they're not meeting me there, I'm gonna try and pull them here so we can get an agreement. This is what the end of an argument should look like. All right, we're not 100% you know, in each other's space, but we have a, a middle ground there, right? Where we're meeting. That's an argument. Now, for narcissists, don't look anything like that. It looks like this, boom, 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 boom. You're out of the picture. Good, I won, boom. That's what an argument to a narcissist looks like. And if they use things like guilt and shame and name calling and hollering and temper tantruming and threatening, then that's not, that's a no go. That is a no go. I wouldn't even do a relationship with that. If I got into one argument where that person did those things, I would be so far gone. There would be skid marks on the road where I was peeling out. <laughs> Oh, you never see me. Don't look at my license plate. Don't contact me on Facebook. I've been in rela beginning relationships 
where the where the woman was just went angry at me after the first date didn't explain why just started saying bad things about me to other people after the first date happens right not like that no they shouldn't be saying bad things about you i cut it off i was like i'm not even we're not even doing this this is it it's over i was nice from then on uh you don't want to um fall into the hostility trap that the narcissist sets uh, they are trying to present themselves as a victim and then you are the victimizer and if you so they can attack you all they want and they're never going to see that right then when you attack them back oh it's all about you being the oppressor even though they were trying to oppress you for the longest time don't fall into that get your distance oh i got my distance i got so much distance yeah, you don't do it. Don't play it. Don't even go there. It's off the charts. And you have to you have to let people go there because you want to see if they're going to be something that you can't you don't want to deal with in your life. You definitely don't want to deal with a narcissist in your life. You need those three distances. Uh physical distance, that's the holy grail because once you're done with them, you're done with them and they won't do any more psychological damage and in any more mental damage to you. Because being around a narcissist is, a, they are toxic people. And just like having a, a, you know, a vat of chemicals, toxic chemicals in your living room, <laughs> they are toxic. If you're around toxicity, you will get damaged. You will get damaged psychologically and mentally. Psychologically, uh, you know, it's all your psychological stuff. Mentally is where you're running it in your head again and again. I should have said, they should have done, how dare them. Why do they keep doing this? Why did they argue that? Because they're broken people, that's why. It's not going to happen. You're not going to fix them. Trying to fix a narcissist is like trying to, fix, trying to get a blind person to see. It's not going to happen for you. So those are the three things I use to see if a person is a narcissist. And it it's not just romantic, right? It's that boss at that job. You don't want to work for narcissists. Yeah, those are the three things I use to search out a narcissist, to find out if they are a narcissist. You use that in your romantic endeavors and you use that in your workplace endeavors. Use that with coworkers, supervisors, uh, anything like that. I am done with narcissists. I am not putting that into my experience anymore, and you shouldn't either. Okay, people, have a great life. Have a great day, and until next time.